Before we investigate some more concepts in general relativity, we need to understand Penrose diagrams. They are useful tools for visualization and quickly let you see the causal structure of different space-time. In this video, we will see the motivation behind them and how they are made. We will take a look at the simplest example, that is of flat space. If we are in spherical coordinates, we can get the line element. We can already make a space-time diagram for our situation. But to make a Penrose diagram, we need to first outline two goals. The first is we want light cones to remain at 45 degrees. And the second is we want to represent all of space in a finite boundary. If we return to our line element, we can compute dt over dr and see that the light cones are at 45 degrees everywhere. More information on light cones is in the video linked above. However, the time and radial axis go on forever. All of space is not in a finite boundary in our diagram. One way we might approach this problem is using the arctan function. It takes an input that ranges from minus infinity to infinity and gives a corresponding value that is bounded to a range. Let us now apply this function to our time and radial coordinate. We denote the rescaled coordinates with a bar. To see what our metric is in our new coordinates, we will invert the original expression and write t in terms of t bar. Then we take the derivative and square it to get dt squared. We also do this with the radial coordinate, and then we can write our new metric. Here we have wrote the angular part of the metric as d omega squared. We can once again compute our light cones, but now notice that our light cones are not at 45 degrees everywhere. We achieved the second goal, but do not meet our first one. We will need to be a little more clever before we compact our coordinates. Let us change to null coordinates. We let our new coordinates v and u be sums and differences of our original coordinates. Once again, we can invert these expressions to get equations for t and r, and then take the derivative and square it. This will let us write our metric in these null coordinates. If we keep u and v constant, on our original t versus r diagram, we can show lines of constant u and v. The light cone structure shows that the coordinate axes themselves are null, giving rise to the term null coordinates. We will continue doing some more basic computations and keeping track of our steps. Let us apply the arctan function on this null coordinate system and write the metric. Remember that arctan allowed us to compact our range into a finite interval. With this metric now in terms of capital U and V, we have ranges that are finite, but our light cone is still in the same orientation as was shown. We must change coordinates once again to get the light cone back to its upright position. We will use capital T and R as the new so-called time coordinate and radial coordinate. Writing the metric in these coordinates, we can define a factor omega at the front. We will write a new metric ds squared tilde. That is our metric in our new coordinates multiplied by omega squared. The reason for this is our metric diverges when omega equals zero. If we define a new metric with this term canceled out, we won't have that problem. We must be careful though, this omega term ultimately does not impact the light cone structure. You can see this because there are no derivative terms in omega. Thus, when computing the light cone, it will have no effect. The omega term is called the conformal factor. This is why these diagrams are sometimes called conformal diagrams. Since we started with flat space, all our coordinate changes did not do anything special. But when we defined the tilde metric at the end, we multiplied out a term that is fundamentally different from a coordinate change. Multiplying by omega squared now makes it so that our tilde metric now has curvature. To see this, you can compute the Riemann tensor, which we will cover in another video of the original metric and find all 20 independent components are zero, and then compute it for our tilde metric and find non-zero components. But now we find that our tilde metric is the solution for the Einstein static universe. That is the solution Einstein had of a universe with no collapse 
or expansion. It has curvature and a cosmological constant. We will talk more about different types of universes when we go to cosmology, but remember that our coordinates were compacted so that our metric is a subset of the full Einstein static universe. We can represent it as the interior of the shaded region, which is a part of the full Einstein static solution. But now, if we kept track of all the coordinate changes and boundaries of our coordinates, we could plot a diamond shape with time running vertically and space running horizontally and keep the light cones at 45 degrees. Now we can label the different boundaries. After watching the last video on light cones, we should know a little about what these terms mean. Time-like geodesics begin at past time-like infinity and end at future time-like infinity. Null geodesics begin at past null infinity and end at future null infinity and space-like geodesics begin and end at spatial infinity. I should note that we only decided to show half the diamond here because space is symmetric if we change R to negative R. I have linked a resource in the description where you can set your velocity, position and time and see how the geodesics behave and you will see it is consistent with the descriptions of the regions. Lastly, the lines on the diagram are lines of constant radius and time. Let us summarize the process we did. We started with the regular TR plane and had light cones at 45 degrees, but the ranges of T and R were not finite. We then used the arctan function to compact the coordinates, but noticed that although the range was now finite, the light cones did not remain at 45 degrees. Instead, we first changed to null coordinates, which lined up our coordinate axes with the light cone and then used arctan to bring it into a finite range. We then changed back to coordinates in which our light cones are upright, so that now both our goals were accomplished. Now that we have covered in some detail the specifics of light cones, we are ready to cover the three cases of black holes, static Schwarzschild black holes, charged black holes, and rotating black holes. That is in order of increasing difficulty.